Okay, so we're going to cover Monday and Wednesday. So day 16 and 17, this is after spring break. Everything's online. We talk about backup, users, classwork. There, um, currently there's issues with the Zoom sessions. They appear to be recording, but it's taking a long time to get them to render, so I don't have access to the Zoom sessions, um, any of them after Monday. So I'll let you know next week we might switch video conferencing software. We have another option. <clears throat> Actually, there's probably a couple different options, but anyway. <clears throat> so Linux... You need to be able to access your machine, and we're working on backups. I'm going to back up your home directories, and currently we're backing those up to work server number two, and pretty soon we'll give you, um, you should have work server number three. You should have access to that. 172.21.0.3 so you can test that the accounts is the same and then we did the initial password in class I'll give you some more information on that later on that initial password yeah I'd have to look that up <clears throat> but we did do that in class and then you were to change your password so you can check to see if you can access that. <clears throat> and you can check back in your notes because we covered that. The um yeah, when you when you back up, make sure you check the size of your files so that you're not accidentally backing up the backup to where they would grow exponentially. <clears throat> and plan the process, apply a script. You want a script to manage to apply it and run it at a particular time. Okay. Tar to, you want to compress, right? You want to compress, you want to use some compression algorithm to compress it so it's smaller before you, um, you want to back up the whole thing as its regular size. So, we're going to add users and we're going to manage those. Okay. Um, I reviewed some people. Their Chrome tabs didn't work because they didn't have an absolute path to the information. Okay. Secure copy. There's other ways to do that. Set up a security key pair, and then you can use a Chrome tab to copy that information to from your machine to another server. And we do have the other two servers in the front of the room, which we might start making more use of. <clears throat> Data in terms of what we want to back up, you should be able to um, classify data. Okay, um, we have data that's static, and um, then we have files that have changed. So you got to decide what you're going to back up, where you're going to back it up to, and when. Personal identification information. So you have a classifications of your data. <clears throat> Key thing is what to back up, where and when, and how you're going to manage that. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> we talked about scripts. You know, you can just put some commands in a text file and get it to actually execute the commands, but we want to learn how to create scripts 
with the um, interpreter and so forth. <clears throat> People need to be more concerned about details, um, permissions when you use the when you do the plus zero and you're adding and subtracting permissions. You got to think about that. Because if you just do the plus, you're just adding permissions. If you want to change another permission, you have to take it away. I would suggest you use a read, write, execute. This would be another way to do this. So if you do a um, a five, a five would be they can read and execute the files. <clears throat> a six, they could read and write. A seven is all three of them. You see how you get the numbers? It's the owner, the group, and everybody else. Classwork. You can look at your Chrome tab and edit the Chrome tab. You have to have some savvy in VI. Make sure you consider your paths inside your Chrome tab. <clears throat> User add. We have options, and then you can add the username. If you use a skeleton directory, that skeleton directory, however you build it, will be added to the user that you add. <clears throat> we did an example, user add, class 2020, password, Niac. 2020 for an explanation point. So, the class work, you're going to create users and you can use everybody in the class. They're going to have a public HTML directory. There's, so they'll have their own web page. You're going to do some groups. So you want to put different students in different groups with different permissions and access the different directories. You're going to need to do password management. You know, how many days before it needs to be changed. You're going to use your peers to test the work. And I got some more information on that on our next day slides. So you create a user. I suggest you just create one now. We have until the end of March to get this done. Create one, get everything set up for one user, and make sure you can do that, and then later you can add the rest of the users. You want to be able to back up the user's information. So that's why we're working on a backup now. And eventually they'll have access to a MySQL and Apache. So when you install those servers, the users will be able to create their own database and their own website. I demonstrated there's a way to take those database tables and back them up. It actually backs them up in a text, backs up the data, and this is an analogy would be this is like a uh, config file. So you can actually reinstall the data back into a MySQL engine. <clears throat> we also talked a little bit about setting up the security then so that you can copy the information from your machine to another machine. Password management. I will... Um, I'll look at maybe creating some um, creating some short videos to repeat the process. You can do a little research on Pam, but it's uh, it's how um, passwords are managed in Linux system. I believe Windows probably need a different color here. Windows they have a SAM file or SAM to manage that same stuff. So we have this user, <clears throat> this password for this user, and what we did is we went in and we adjusted it. Inside that shadow file, 
we've got a username, the, we've got the hash for their password, and then we have some numbers. We have days since the password's been changed, days before it can be changed. You can say, okay, you, you changed it, now you can't change it for another 10 days or whatever. Days after which it must be changed. This is a key one here. You're going to say you're going to change it every 30 days after you change it, and then you got another 30 days before you change it. This number of days we're going to warn you before it expires. After it expires, we're going to disable it this many days. Then this will indicate the number of days that has been expired since that date. Alright, so look for, I'll try to do some short videos. Covering some of these main topics and also make sure you're still working in the curriculum. Taking the tests and doing the labs. That's it.